from uh, inside of us, within us, and the obstacles which come from without. To fight against these obstacles in order that we may be able to make progress, the Islamic ideal can be uh, stated to consist of three levels of conquest. Conquest of the self, conquest of the environment and conquest of nature. The entire Sharia is based on this, the entire Islamic um, teaching is based on this notion, on this idea. Conquest of the self, conquest of the environment and conquest of nature. By means of nature I mean this conquest in space and time of the world around us, beyond the earth. The world of natural phenomena. Now if this ideal is understood properly by a Muslim community, then when they pray five times a day, as we should, their prayer will have a force because there is an ideal which has got to be achieved by means of this prayer. When they fast, then they will fast with a definite consciousness that they have got to achieve an ideal by this means. This is the technique or instrument of that ideal. And when anything is done, when anything will be done by them, they will always be conscious of the ideal all the time and consequently the instrument will be tested all the time. As you read in the Hadith that once there was a person who, was, who offered his prayers in the masjid and the Holy Prophet والسلام, saw him and when he had completed his prayer, the Holy Prophet والسلام, called him to himself and said, you have not prayed, pray again. He had prayed, you see, but he said to him, you have not prayed, pray again. So this thing will occur only when there is some idea. And if prayer is considered only to be a ritual, whatever it may be, if the arcana of the prayer have been fulfilled, it is prayer all right. But if prayer is the instrument or a means to some idea, then every person will consider it his or her obligation to see to it when he has prayed or when he or she is praying, whether that ideal is being achieved or not. He will have to engage in a sort of self-examination and in that manner he will improve and he will learn how to pray, really in spirit and consequentially. But if the, if the ideal itself is not known or if the ideal consists only in a vague uh, concept of sabab and the meaning of sabab itself is not understood, it is considered to be something magical which occurs as a consequence of some action or some reading or something else of that sort, then again you see Islam cannot achieve its purpose, although the community which says that they are Muslim, purpose, although the community which says that they are Muslim, they may be very loyal to Islam. <coughs> that has been our undoing. It's not only in South Africa, it is everywhere. And I believe that uh, we should make a <coughs> determined effort. You know, at this moment, my analysis is that at this moment there are only two forces in the world of Islam. There is one force which is the force of conservatism. <coughs> they want to conserve everything that has come from their forefathers. It is to conserve. All that is old is gold. This is what they think. 
And uh, then, the, then there is another current which is becoming more and more powerful and which has become very dangerous. The trend of modernism. So there is conservatism on one side, modernism on the other, and Islam is sandwiched between these two. Uh, my study of Islam has given me to, to believe that while conservatism essentially is good, to use it beyond a certain measure is bad. Especially if this conservatism consists in preservation of certain things which are not fundamental. Consequently, a re-examination is um, urgently needed where we may be able to know what orthodox Islam is. By orthodox Islam I mean that which is given in the Quran and that which was given by the Holy Prophet ﷺ in Sunnah. That is Orthodox Islam. That Orthodox Islam, what I have been able to find is revolutionary and highly progressive. <coughs> very natural and very rational and very powerful. The conservative outlook we have, we have seen and known has not been able to help Islam. We are being bit, beaten day in and day out for the last quite a long time. Modernistic outlook unfortunately is inspired more by the inferiority complex. Whatever comes from the West is right and good because the Western nations are making material progress. It's not that whatever comes from the West is right and good. Most of it, it is absolutely wrong. Their progress consists in adoption of business ethics and in adoption of the principle of organization and in industry and in industrial technology whereby they are able to capture the markets of the world and to get all the wealth from the world and then to they are able to build up those programs which require immense amounts of money and so they can go even to the moon I mean, say once they have got that knowledge of physical science but in in, in many things they are hopelessly wrong. In many things they are hopelessly wrong. So all that comes from the West is not correct. And anybody who is inspired by this, who has got this inferiority complex, that whatever is Western, whatever is modern is good and whatever is old is bad, uh, he is committing a very big crime. And such persons have been able to uh, <coughs> land themselves nowhere except in heterodoxy. Heterodoxy is uh, intellectual dishonesty. Because if I know, if I believe that Islam is from God, and if I know that something has been, I have been told something by God, then for me to try to amend it would mean that I regard the my wisdom as superior to the wisdom of God. Where do I stand after that? Nowhere. Right in the abyss. So heterodoxy is, uh, is absolutely something absolutely dishonest. And in the Muslim world, heterodoxical movements are also there. They might be honest otherwise, they must be uh, um, sincere otherwise, they might feel that it is only through this path that Muslims can regain their lost glory and 
power and so on and so forth. But the very spirit with which they start is wrong. The spirit should be to employ all the knowledge that you might have, to employ it for knowing honestly without any bias and without any preconceived opinions, what is it that the Qur'an wants from you and what is it that the Holy Prophet ﷺ actually wanted from you. If this effort is made, I think, and if this, on this effort we can pull together and there can be a powerful movement in the world of Islam, my humble opinion is, my idea is that we will be able to make progress. We will be able to make progress and we will at the same time be able to remain real good Muslims. So, it is this point of view of mine that I try to preach what, what I name as dynamic orthodoxy. And that I have been uh, trying my level best to preach here in this country and that I preach when I go to any other country or I preach inside Pakistan. But here again it is not simply a matter of academic solution of any particular problem, of a theoretical solution. This world is a world of activity and uh, thinking is only a stepping stone to action. Thought is a stepping stone to action. So thinking and clear thinking and honest thinking and methodical thinking or you may call it scientific thinking that is essential. But it should be for action. And if this gospel of action can be revived among the Muslims in any manner, that alone I think inshallah will do good. Any what I whatever I have preached of which the starting point is to develop a living uh, relationship with God. Living to experience God. That is the starting point, in my opinion, the starting point of Islam and the very foundation of Islam. Without that, without building up that consciousness about God and that experience of God, I don't think that uh, any individual or any community can build up his or its life properly in accordance with the Islamic, uh, on the Islamic foundations. And when we experience, when we start on this road, when we, when we uh, go on building up our consciousness of God, then certain things are bound to appear in the character and person of a person, of that, of that man or woman who does it. The first fruit of this is humility. The more a person experiences God, the more humble he becomes or she becomes. The more a person experiences God, the more sweet and the more gentle and the more compromising he becomes. Compromising not on truth, or she becomes. The more a person experiences God, the more sweet and the more gentle and the more compromising he becomes. Compromising not on truth, not compromising truth with falsehood, but compromising in the daily human, uh, 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 what I should say, dealings. To uh, uh, deal with other human beings with the spirit of making them happy, even if one has got to make, to go out of his way to a certain extent. 
the more a person gets this experience or this consciousness of God, the wiser he becomes. He tries to avoid vain things, tries to pursue things which are of the higher type, tries to pursue knowledge, tries to pursue constructive activity in life. And in this manner, the uh, deeper the consciousness in God becomes, the better human being a person becomes. And for this, if a person could learn even to pray five times a day, these obli obligatory prayers, in the manner in which Islam wants it, to make an effort for that. You see, with that consciousness and with that depth and with that seriousness and with that spirit of communion and love for God, I think uh, this one institution of Islam can change the character of a person immensely. <coughs> so, my message has been this and this is again my message tonight to all of you. The only uh, um, reality is God. The eternally living reality is God. God is the source of all knowledge, of all wisdom, of all blessings, of all truth and of all beauty and of all power and of everything. <coughs> Try to build up with Him as strong a bond as possible. The stronger it is, the better man you are, the more successful you are. The more powerful you are, the wiser you are. But it should be exactly that which Islam wants. And for this the test will always be for you to understand whether you are becoming more godly or not. Is the emergence of those qualities in your character, humility, gentleness, selflessness, integrity, you see, these things are bound to emerge as consequences. And if they are not emerging, then there is something wrong in your approach. You may be very sincere. So, ask from someone whom you might think that he has acquired that thing. Ask him. <coughs> and tell him, I have been doing this thing, but this is the condition of my heart. I don't want to be absolutely honest. I don't want to be absolutely humble, I don't want to be this, then what is wrong with me? Why have I not been able to acquire this? So you will find somebody in the world, in God's good world, who might be in that capacity of a teacher or in a capacity where he is a few steps beyond where you stand, and he might be able to tell you that this has happened to you. Correct yourself in this manner. In this way, even a community which is a very small minority can live Islam. You cannot build up an Islamic state. Of course, those majority Muslim communities also have not been able to build up an Islamic state. That is out of the question. But you can live Islam and you can get the you can get its beauty and its grace and its charm and its sweetness and its ecstasy and its happiness. And if you at any time might try to analyze your life as to what is it that you ultimately want, then only two words emerge, happiness and success. Happiness and success. So you want happiness. Uh, godliness gives a, gives a happiness which is real happiness. 
Try it. And you will find that that is the truth. It gives a happiness which cannot be overpowered by the greatest of sorrows. It stays. So, try to live Islam in this way. Try to understand it and live Islam in this way. And inshallah, you will acquire whatever the conditions which are in your environment. Every one of us will be able to acquire happiness and success. And these are the things which a human being wants. And uh, for this, we should not wait. For nothing good should anybody ever wait. Because tomorrow never comes. Tomorrow never comes. So what is to be done is to be done today. And that's why the Holy Prophet has emphasized Work for these ideals, for this ideal of Islam to be noble and good and holy. In one word, godly, to work for this ideal as if this day alone is the day which has been permitted for you to live in this world and tomorrow definitely you are going to die. So my dear friends, this is my message. In my very humble capacity as a very humble servant of Islam and a very humble servant of mankind, be serious. We should be serious. We should try to thrash out our problems, to understand them. And once we have come to a conclusion that this is the right path, then we should go on that path. It's not just to stand there and or loaf about. That the path has been found out, but we are just loafing about, or we are just wasting our time. Those who waste their time don't get anything. <coughs> the Western nations do not waste their time. They have got a time for their material progress and they make a planned effort. So no nation in the world can challenge them materially. In any aspect, they are unchallengeable. But if we do not try to understand Islam properly and do not try to live Islam consequentially, then we can vegetate, we can uh, continue to bring into this world through procreation Muslims who are Muslim by accident, Muslim by accident, Muslim by accident. Increase their numbers as much as possible, but Islam had come to build up quality and not quantity. <coughs> and we should aim at that, and Islam is not a conundrum. It's not a jigsaw puzzle or anything of that sort. It's something very plain and simple. But it has got to be accepted, you see, in that spirit. And then the way becomes very smooth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَا دِيَنَّهُ سُبُرًا Whoever he strives in my way, and for me, I make the path smooth for him. I guide him on that path and lead him to the goal. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to benefit from Islam ourselves. And when we are able to benefit ourselves from Islam, then we can also benefit others with the light of Islam and the life which Islam brings and the, with the greatness and glory which Islam brings. <coughs> May it be so. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi <coughs> Your dynamic philosophy and your message, I'm sure, 
has been accepted and received with great understanding by the community of Pretoria. And it is with, indeed with sadness that we say farewell to you. But we would like to reiterate that your message of simplicity, your message of humility, and your message of compromising, which is necessary in the religion of Islam, will certainly be borne by our, all of us in South Africa. And we are most grateful to Allah for having sent you to this country, to this sunny South Africa. And although you have mentioned at the dinner table that you have been overwhelmed with the love that the South African Muslims have for you and that you would not like to come back in view of the immense number of hours that you've had to spend with the Muslims of South Africa, I would like to say to you at this last hour of appeal that we would like you to come back to this country of ours to give us further instruction and further guidance and some more of your knowledge to this thirsty and eager Muslim community of South Africa. We are very, very grateful to you under the circumstances that you were with your health and with the loss of energy that you described to me this evening. And we are very happy that you have, uh, even after all the persuasion, agreed to speak to us tonight. And I'm sure that our host, Mr. Salih Hadid Yusuf, and his family, and his brother Sikandar, must be very, very uh, delighted to have had you here for dinner at their residence. And I would like to express on behalf of all of us here that we have been greatly honored and privileged to have had you with us tonight. Thank you very much. Salami. We have performed Salami. Ya Nabi Salam Alaikum Ya Rasul Salam Alaikum Ya Habib Salam Alaikum Salawatullah Alaikum Ya Nabi Shamsun anta badrun anta nurun fawqa nuri anta iksirrun wa ghali anta misbaha suduri Ya Nabi Salam Alaikum Ya Rasul Salam Ya Nabi Salam Alaikum Ya Rasul Salam Alaikum Ya Habib Salam Alaikum Salawatullah Alaikum Ya Habibi, Ya 
Muhammad Ya Mu'ayyad Ya Mumajad Ya Imam Al-Qiblatayni Salawatullah Alaikum Ya Nabi Salam Alaikum Ya Rasul Salam Alaikum Ya Habib Salam Alaikum Salawatullah Alaikum Ya Rabbi Salli wa Sallim Daiman Abada خير الخلق كلهم ربنا تقبل منا